Welcome. We're going to be continuing going through the AP Calculus AB Term 1 Standard Quiz model. We're going to now focus on the second question, which asks us to demonstrate some understanding of some of the basic parent graphs and being able to transform them using basic transformations. So to start here, like you'll notice the instructions on number two feature the same thing every single time. They say sketch by hand a variety of transformations involving exponential, logarithmic, and or trigonometric functions, label all asymptotes and intercepts. So truthfully, there's probably some even descriptions and names of functions missing there. We could also do something rational. We could do some sort of piecewise function. Their polynomials would be a, a possibility here as well. So lots of different options there. We basically just want to keep all the options open. So I tried to pick a representative set here to go through so that that way you could kind of see some of the expectations and some of the things that might pop up as you go through one of these graphs. So the first one that we're going to be looking at is y equals 3 to the x minus 3. So we're looking at an exponential function here. And in fact, it's probably worth mentioning that on here, that this is exponential. And the thing to know about exponential is that there is a horizontal asymptote involved. So basically we're going to have to deal with that um, just as well as everything else. So the first thing we're going to look at here is we're trying to find intercepts, we're trying to find asymptotes. So first of all, if we're looking for intercepts, there are two different ways that could happen. The first one is if x equals 0. So if x equals 0, that means that y equals 3 to the 0 minus 3, which is 1 minus 3, also known as negative 2. Second, the other possibility, oh, well, what does that mean? That means that we have an x-intercept at, excuse me, we have a y-intercept at 0 comma negative 2. So right down here, I'm going to go ahead and plot a dot. Again, this isn't the most fancy. It's not overly labeled or anything yet. I'm just going to put down, though, that this is at 0, negative 2. So there's our first one. There's our y-intercept. To get our x-intercept, we need to know what happens or when it is that y equals 0. And if y equals 0, that's the same thing as trying to figure out for what x value does 3 to the x minus 3 equals 0. Clearly, we want 3 minus 3, which tells us that x is going to be equal to 1. So our x-intercept is going to be x equals 1, y comma 0. So there is our second intercept. So we've now found both intercepts, both the x and the y. There was one apiece in this case. Sometimes there's less. Some, theoretically, there could be more, at least of um, x-intercepts in this case. But our second thing that we want to look at is we also want to look at asymptotes. So asymptotes, um, if they're vertical, that's when the denominator would equal 0. Um, there's other ways. We'll get to formal definitions in Calculus AB as well. Um, but if we're talking about horizontal asymptotes, then we've got to consider like what happens as x goes to plus or minus infinity. So in this case, something that's worth pointing out, although it may not have been defined this way for you in the past, is if you let x go towards negative infinity, that's the same thing as kind of saying 3 to the negative infinity minus 3. So 3 to the negative infinity with that negative exponent is the same thing as 1 over 3 to the infinity minus 3. And 1 divided by 3 to the infinity is the same thing as 1 divided by infinity. And 1 divided by a huge thing is just 0. So if we get 0 minus 3, that tells us that we're going to have a horizontal asymptote of y equals negative 3. So down here, we already said our y-intercept was negative 2. So now I'm going to draw in a horizontal asymptote. And of course, you might be arguing that that's not the most horizontal of asymptotes. So I'll just flatten it a little bit. We're going to again label that thing as y equals negative 3. And now that gives us enough to kind of get our graph going. Like you'd be welcome to draw more points if you need to, but I know exponential graphs look like that. They start flat and then grow. So in this case, I'm going to do exactly that. Go through my two intercepts, draw it out, and there is my exponential graph with everything labeled nicely. So there it is. There's our first one. Part B. This time, looking at our function type, we have negative x minus 2 squared times the quantity x plus 3 cubed. So this is just a straight up polynomial. At Franklin, we typically talk about noodle bowls, and your stomach starts to rumble a little bit. But a polynomial function we know kind of follows this kind of stuff. So we get all sorts of like fun little bumps and everything. In particular here, things we've got to look at again, intercepts. There's not going to be any asymptotes. Polynomials don't have asymptotes. But intercepts are going to be really valuable. So are the left and right end behaviors, trying to figure out which direction the graph is going as we go to positive or negative infinity. <coughs> Excuse me. So in looking at some of these pieces, first thing I want to do is I want to consider the degree. For polynomials, the degree really matters because that tells us whether or not we have noodle or bowl behavior. So for our degree in this case, we can look at the exponents. This would be the same thing as x squared squared 
and this would be the same thing as x cubed. So if you multiply an x squared and an x cubed together, you get that this is a degree five equation. And in Franklin terms, that means that we have some sort of noodle. More than that, because of that negative sign in the front, we're actually gonna have not just a noodle, but a negative noodle. And negative noodles start high, do some stuff, and then end low. So it's a really important place to begin because we know it's gonna begin up or it's going to begin by going to positive infinity as x goes to negative infinity, and it's going to go to negative infinity as x goes to positive infinity. From there, we next need to look at our intercepts. We said that there were a few of those things. So looking at our intercepts, if y equals 0, we'll start with the y or the x-intercept. If y equals 0, I think it's pretty clear to see that it's whatever is going to make each of those factors equal 0 that we'll consider. So we're going to get 2. We're going to get x equals 2 and x equals negative 3. So again, as we did before, I'm going to plot in a point there, and we'll, I'll, I'll wait to label them for just a little bit just to make sure I don't go over something I'm going to be graphing. And then we also have negative 3, so fair enough. Now last, we need to look at the y-intercept, which will be when x equals 0. And if x equals 0, that's going to mean that our y-value, I'll write this nicely, our y-value is going to be negative 0 minus 2 squared, 0 plus 3 cubed. And if we evaluate that, we're going to get negative 4 and 27. And well, 27 times 2 is 54. So 27 times 4 must be 108. So our y-intercept is actually negative 108. Now you might be arguing that that should be way the heck down there. But I'm just going to exaggerate, as I'm prone to do. I'm just going to put my y-intercept right down there. And then, of course, because we're labeling it, we'll be able to take care of that. No one can argue if we have a nice analytic graph of what we're looking at. So as far as values here... We know that we've got to go through the intercepts. We also know it's going to start high up here, and it's going to end somewhere down here. That's all valuable information. But of course, the last thing we want to hit is we want to note that that squared creates what, in Franklin terms, we call a bounce. It's going to bounce right off. x equals 2. could be above or below. And then second, for the cube, it's going to create what we call a slide. So it's going to do something like that, one of those two. Just like the first one technically would have been one of those two as well. So following the pattern, we've got a slide over here we've got a bounce over here so following that pattern I'm going to start high I'm going to slide a little bit and again I'm exaggerating a little bit I know that I am I'm gonna go through the y-intercept we're going to bounce off x equals 2 and then continue back downward now there are some things here of course first as I mentioned before we do need to label everything we said that was negative 3 comma 0, this was 2 comma 0, and that this was going to be 0 comma negative 108. Something that's worth pointing out here is you might ask, like, well, how did I know that there was going to be a relative minimum at x equals 0? And the answer is I don't. I mean, for all I know, it could actually go, this graph could actually go, like, down here and then come up that way or something. But, again, we're representative. It's enough. If we wanted to figure out exactly where that maximum or minimum happened to fall, um, at least the one down there, we would need a graphing calculator or more advanced calculus. So keep that in mind. But there is our nice graph of that polynomial function. Third, we have a log. For some reason, the log is one of the hardest ones for students to graph every single year on the standard quiz. So hopefully this video will be helpful to avoid letting you be one of those students. So in here, how did I know it was a log? Well, it would probably be the presence of the word log. It's usually a good sign, as things are. So in a logarithmic function, important thing to note is that there's going to be a vertical asymptote. So there's a lot of different ways you could graph this, but a vertical asymptote is really important. And in fact, the traditional log shape looks like this. It's basically the same as the exponential, just since it's the inverse operation, it is reflected across a particular line. So we've got to deal with something along those lines. In this case, the first place I'm going to point out to you is to find your asymptote, in this case, your vertical asymptote. That's going to be when the argument which in our case is x plus 2, is equal to 0. So in this case, we're going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. So I'm going to start by drawing that in there. And again, as you look, you go, it's not very vertical. No, I know. There we go. So we have our vertical asymptote. Again, I'll label it, being a faithful labeler. Second, we need to consider both x and y intercepts now. And this can actually be a little bit more involved going to have to be pretty clever here. So first and foremost, let's start with the y-intercept. If we let x equal 0, that's going to tell us that y is equal to the log base 4 
of 0 plus 2, which is the same thing as log base 4 of 2. Now this is the same thing, again, ask, kind of following the same pattern. This is the same thing as asking 4 to what power equals 2. And of course, 2 is the square root of 4, so that means that our y-intercept is going to be y equals 1 half. So I'm going to put that somewhere up here. Again, I'm not worried so much about scale, so much as making sure it's in the right area. This should be above the x-axis, so it is. So there is our y-intercept. Second, we need to figure out what our x-intercept is, and that'll kind of complete everything else that's there. So for x-intercept, that's going to be when y equals 0. So in other words, we're trying to figure out when is log base 4 of x plus 2 equal to 0. So we can solve this using exponential we could base 4, we could 4 to the power of both sides. We could raise both sides to the power of 4. There's a lot of different ways to say it. In either event, we're going to get 4 to the 0 is 1. 4 to the log base 4, they are inverses, so they undo each other, and we get x plus 2. In any event, we find out that x equals negative 1. So basically, if x equals negative 1, that means that we can place that point right over here. And then following our pattern, we just hug the asymptote for a little while and then draw the rest of our graph labeling our intercepts and voila there is our log graph now it's kind of a warning the most typical mistake I did say this is a common one for people to miss the most typical mistake is people draw it almost like a radical they draw a dot and then continue Sometimes I think that's because graphs, like when you graph them on a graphing calculator, oftentimes look like they stop. It's just because calculators have a hard time rendering that sort of asymptotic behavior that's going, getting closer and closer to a particular vertical line. So it's definitely not that. In fact, to emphasize that, I'll scribble it out. That's more fun anyway. But there is our log graph. So it's just like an exponential, but growing vertically instead. Finally, the fourth one we're going to look at here, again, this isn't comprehensive, this isn't every single type of function, but these are pretty common types. This one gives us a square root curve, so this is a radical. But don't worry, the techniques used to graph one of these are not particularly radical. So with radicals, these ones are what people mistakenly draw graph logs as. They start at a point, and then they continue from there. It has to do with that domain restriction built into a square root curve, particularly that the argument has to be zero or bigger or it has to be non-negative would have been the best way to say that. So in this case, we've got to figure out where this thing really starts and then pull everything else out from there. So a couple of little things here. First of all, if I think about this one using transformations, just because I haven't been doing that a whole lot, if you look at the transformations for this particular function, those transformations are going to be that the x plus 4 moves this graph left 4. So it's going to move 4 left from wherever it originally started, or its original points were. And then the plus 1 is going to move everything up 1. So actually, as a good starting spot, we could actually simply think about how this transforms the original parent graph, y equals the square root of x. And in fact, that's going to take that vertex 0, 0, and move it 4 to the left and up 1, which means that our new vertex is going to be 4 left, up 1. That new vertex is going to fall at the point negative 4, comma 1. So the reason I'm starting there is that it actually kind of helps us out a little bit. Just by doing that, I can tell that there's not going to be any x-intercept. Because we have a positive square root curve, that means the graph is going to have to follow this general shape. In fact, you'll notice I'm not even going to go back and erase that. I'm just going to leave it be. I can tell now that all I actually need here is to figure out what that y-intercept is. It's going to be 0, comma something. That's all I have left. So finding my intercept here. So if I want an a y-intercept, that's going to be when x equals 0. That would be the same thing as determining what is y. And that would be 1 plus the square root of 0 plus 4. That's going to be 1 plus root 4, which is going to be 3. So there is a y-intercept at 0, comma 3. And there is our radical graph. Again, probably the simplest of those ones to go through. Obviously, we were saved a little bit from time because we did not have to go through and deal with the x-intercept. So cool stuff. Finally, just like the first one, we do have a plus question here. And again, this question changes a lot. I do have pretty high expectations for students on this question, um, being able to kind of pull up any particular parent graph and then do some stuff with it. In this case, it looks pretty simple. I mean, it starts as just kind of an exponential graph. It's 2 to the x minus 8, but it's the absolute value. 
And so the absolute value of 2 to the x minus 8 means that this graph has to always be positive. So that's an important consideration. Basically, if the graph is positive, when you take the absolute value of something positive, it stays positive. But if the graph is negative, when you take its absolute value, it has to become positive because there's no way to spit out a negative value from this particular piece. So we've got to really think about this shape. And an important place to begin here, good reason or good orientation point is to think about what the graph of y equals 2 to the x minus 8 actually looks like. So we already talked about exponential in this video. So in fact, this one would have a horizontal asymptote of negative 8. And then, let's see, it would grow asymptotically from there. So that's basically our general shape. So of course, something important for us is going to be to figure out where that intercept is. In fact, I can do that intercept right now. If we want y to equal 0, then that's going to be the same thing as 2 to the x minus 8 equals 0. And I'm hoping you can see pretty quickly that that's going to mean that x equals 3. So for sure, there's going to be an important point here at 3 comma 0. So that's an important starting spot. Now from there though, if we want this graph to always be positive, as we said, it's not going to be an issue if the graph is already positive. So in thinking about this guy, when we take the absolute value of 2 to the x minus 8, that's going to leave the positive parts exactly the same. So whatever they look like, they just stay exactly the same thing. So we're actually fine there. Our problem though, is that before we had this asymptote and this negative portion of the graph. But those guys can't be there anymore because that would make them negative. So what we're gonna do, and kind of the trick for any absolute value of a function that you're trying to graph, is that what was negative before is going to reflect across the x-axis. In a sense, it's gonna flip. So whereas before we had this general shape, this is now going to flip upward, and we're going to get this general shape. So in fact, as it turns out, there's going to be a horizontal asymptote now at y equals 8. No longer is it negative 8, just for what it's worth. Down below, this graph is gone, because of course there's no negative portion that's there. And then as far as our intercepts, we can do that pretty easily. That's just when x equals 0. We could have actually done this without much work, kind of helped ourselves. If we take the absolute value of 2 to the 0 minus 8, we get the absolute value of 1 minus 8, which is the absolute value of negative 7, also known as 7. So we have our y-intercept of 0, 7, and then there is our graph. And of course, here you look, the asymptote isn't the most important portion of this entire thing, but, no, oh, can't highlight it. I illustrate it there just to point out that there is an asymptotic behavior to it, so it's important to have that labeled. It's just been flipped upwards by the absolute value. So there is our work on the second question on the standard quiz model, which focused on sketching analytically, again, analytically not to scale, but analytically, um, some functions and their transformations graphically.